Oracle Apex is a developer tool that enables us to create working applications on a database in Oracle and to do that very quickly. So in this video series for rapid application development, we will be using Apex 424. If you want to work along with the videos, there are scripts available that will be run in the first few videos that create tables and populate the tables with data. In this video, we're going to use SQL Workshop's utility feature to import data into a table. And we will also see a nice feature that creates a lookup table based on existing data in a column in a table. So I'm going to go into SQL Workshop and I'm going to first look at Object Browser. I'm going to look at the Projects table. And if I click the Data tab, I see I have no data in that particular table. And I do have data for that, but it's not in a, a series of SQL Insert Into statements. So it's in a text file. So I'm going to come to SQL Workshop and go to the Utilities section and click Data Workshop. And I will click on the text data. And it's going to upload to an existing table. And it's a comma separated field. If I look in my uh, files that came with the zipped file for scripts, I can see that I have projects data as a txt file, so if I double click on that, then I can see what the data is. So I have data that's enclosed in double quotes, text data, or varchar, and I have a comma separating the fields in that table, or in that data. So I will come to the interface, click Next. I will select the table I'm going to work with, which is Projects, and click Next. Now you choose the file, so I'm going back out and selecting that. And then it's very hard to see here, but the separator is comma, and that's fine. I want to be sure and include the double quote, otherwise the quotes will come into the text field. And I also want to uncheck first row contains column names because it doesn't. And then I will go ahead and click Next. Then there's no match because on column names, so I need to identify the column, which in the first one is project name. And you do see examples of the data from the file, which is not. And then I have the project client. So once I've assigned the data to a particular column, I click Load Data. And then you get this report. In this case, six rows succeeded, zero failed. So that's a good sign. If I go back to SQL Workshop Object Browser and click on Projects and the Data tab, I see I now have the data. And the trigger and sequence for projects generated a unique ID for each project ID. If I come back to students, what I want to look at now is I have this list of student majors within the student table, but I would like to have a reference table that provides the list of possible majors. So I can use a nice feature in SQ, uh, here in Apex in the object browser. If I go back to the table definition, I have a button that says Create Lookup Table. So I'm going to pick that option. I'm going to pick Student Major and click Next. And then you can modify these if you want to. I'll leave it as it is for the name of the sequence and the name of the table. And then I finish. So now I have a Student Major lookup. And if I look at the data, that little utility has taken the data from that column in the students table, inserted it into its own table, created a sequence, created a trigger, assigned a unique ID for each data type. And if I come back to students, and we see the one is ISIS, two is computer science, if we pick on students and scroll down, 
we can see that it has also preserved the relationship by inserting the foreign key value based on the newly generated unique ID values or primary key values in the student lookup or student major lookup table. So what I want to do now though is I want to come back to the lookup table because it has given me a nice reference table but I could actually type in the same student major or major uh, multiple times so there's no uniqueness constraint on this column and I do want that so I'm going to click constraint and I see that I have a not null constraint and I have a primary key constraint but I also need a uniqueness constraint so I can now do a create and I'm going to change this based on my naming convention and I will change it to unique and then I designate which field which is the only there are only two one the primary key and the other is the text or variable character and I click next and I finish so now even though I'm using a surrogate primary key value I still will enforce uniqueness on the major column 